Hello everyone, I am Vinod Ganesan from IIT Madras and I will be presenting our work on a case for generalizability in and cost models for mobile devices. This talk is based on our paper at IASWC 2020 and this work is done with my advisor Professor Pratyush at IIT Madras and with my collaborator Surya from IITM and Sanchari Sen and Professor Anand Raghunathan from Purdue University. Deep neural networks are revolutionizing our everyday lives with applications spanning across a wide spectrum of fields. Simultaneously, the world is getting increasingly connected with the proliferation of mobile and wearable devices. A recent study estimates that by 2025, there will be 75.5 billion connected devices around us. Bringing DNNs to all these connected devices is a necessary and important task. This is challenged, however, by the exponential rate of growth in DNN compute requirements. OpenAI recently projected that the compute requirements of DNNs are growing at a rate of 10 times per year. In comparison, Moore's law is only growing at a rate of 3% per year, creating a huge demand gap between the compute demands of DNN and the compute supply from transistor scaling. This precludes DNN from being deployed to the many billion connected devices. To enable efficient deployment, we need to bridge the demand gap by building accurate and efficient DNNs. It is noteworthy, however, that such efficiently designed DNNs need to be characterized by many hardware platforms before they can be widely deployed, say through an Android, Android app. This need for characterization is another major challenge limiting the widespread de deployment of deep neural networks as there are a huge variety of networks being proposed, greatly accelerated by neural architecture search and a huge variety of device platforms with new and improved generations of mobile devices being released every six months. This characterization is not only important during deployment, but also during development. For example, hardware-aware neural architecture search requires the hardware in the loop to automatically design efficient DNNs. Unfortunately, this exploding product space of DNNs and hardware devices makes it infeasible to characterize each DNN on each hardware device. A viable solution, largely adopted by industry and academia, is to use latency cost models to characterize DNNs for a given device. Conventionally, the latency of a DNN is characterized by execu executing it on a device multiple times before uh, to get a reliable average latency. In the case of latency cost models, the pipeline involves providing the representation of the network as an input to a machine learning model that estimates the latency of the network on that device. This model is trained with a training data set of many networks and its associated latency pairs to make accurate predictions. Cost models are really useful in estimating the latencies of unseen DNNs on, uh, on a given hardware device without having to explicitly characterize them. However, we still need to build unique models for each device in consideration. Given the huge variety of device platforms, this is very impractical. In this work, we make a case for building a single cost model that can reliably estimate the latencies of many unseen DNNs on many unseen mobile devices. To build such a cost model, the key idea is to have a unique hardware representation that is given as an additional input to the cost model. At the very outset, it is not clear how to represent a, a device platform. In this paper, we answer this question conclusively by proposing an elegant representation for any device. With sufficient training data and a good input representation, the cost model will learn to reliably predict the latencies of a given network on a given hardware platform or in other words, the model generalizes across both the axis of network and devices. This becomes our two key challenges that needs to be addressed. That is, we need a training data set of networks and its latency on a wide range of devices. And the choice of representation for device plays a key role in determining the performance of the latency cost model. We will first see how we tackle the challenge of building the training data set. A good training data set should consist of many networks and its latencies on a wide range of devices. For networks, we utilize the set of mobile optimized DNNs popularly used in computer vision such as MobileNet and MNASNet. Additionally, to increase the number of DNNs in the training set, we designed a random DNN generator, which is a PyTorch based framework that generates arbitrary but valid DNNs within the mobile efficient search space spanning across a wide variety of operators like mobile bottleneck and convolutions with varying parameters such as kernel size, stride, and padding. In order to characterize the latency of this network on a wide range of mobile devices, we designed an Android app and crowdsourced the latency measurements. To enable efficient model serving on mobile devices, we quantize the networks to 8-bit integers using TensorFlow Lite's post-training quantizer. 
the android app runs each network 30 times on the mobile cpu and aggregates all the latencies and sends it to a central database upon completion with this characterization framework we were able to gather the latencies of 118 networks on 105 uh, hardware platforms which form our training data set now we will visualize the data set to understand the diversity of networks and mobile devices. To visualize the data set, we plot the, we plot the floating point operations for every network in the network set and the histogram of the CPUs for all the 105 devices. As you can see, the network set consists of a diverse set of DNNs, both existing and randomly generated, ranging from 40 to 800 megaflops spanning across multiple operators and its parameters. Similarly, the hardware set shows significant diversity as well with 22 unique CPUs ranging from the 8-year-old Cortex A53 to the brand new Cryo 585. Thus, the data set shows a re reasonably good and diverse choice of DNNs and mobile devices. To further study this diversity, we cluster the mobile devices based on its latency on the network set. We observe three distinct clusters for the devices based on its latency distribution. Each violin plot corresponds to the latency distribution for a mobile device across all the 118 networks. The three clusters differ in the speed of operation ca categorized into fast, medium fast and slow devices with main latencies 50, 115 and 235 milliseconds respectively. From the overall distribution across all clusters, we can observe a huge variation in the empirical data with latency values differing by an order of magnitude. This wide range of latency distribution substantiates the richness of the crowdsourced data that can be used to learn a reliable cost model that generalizes across the network and the hardware space. Given the rich training data set that can be used to learn the cost model, we satisfy the first challenge. The second and most important challenge now is to determine a good input representation for the learning model. The network representation is straightforward. It is encoded layer-wise and then concatenated. Each layer-wise encoding consists of an operator identifier and a set of parameters. The hardware representation, however, is not straightforward and it is an essential component in determining the generalizability of the proposed model across devices. Let us look at the choices we have to sufficiently represent a hardware and then subsequently look at our proposed simple and elegant representation. The first principle approach to represent a hardware is to use static, static hardware features such as CPU frequency and the DRAM size. But are they any good? To understand that, we plot the frequency for all mobile devices against its latency on mobile net V2. The hue for each point represents the size of the DRAM used. Although we can observe a decreasing latency trend with an increase in, fre increase in frequency and DRAM size, there is significant variability. For instance, a set of devices exhibit a latency variability of 2.5 times for the same frequency and DRAM size. This showcases the poor correlation between the hardware features and its latencies, latency. To conclude this concretely, we trained a cost model across 70 devices by using the aforementioned static features as the hardware representation and plotted the predicted latency of the cost model for, the, for 30 unseen devices against its actual characterized latency. From the plot, it is clear that the learned model is very inaccurate with a poor predictive power. Of course, one can encode more complex features such as pipeline depth, cache size, and also operating system versions and software libraries and its versions to represent the device. However, such features are not readily available across a wide range of devices to an ML practitioner or an app developer. Instead, is there a simpler approach that we can employ? In this work, we propose a simpler and elegant approach to represent a given hardware. Specifically, we discovered that a hardware device can be uniquely represented by its latencies on a carefully chosen set of networks. We call this the signature set since it serves as a unique fingerprint for a given hardware device. This representation is simple and it's easily accessible to ML practitioners and app designers as they simply need to characterize any hardware on the signature set of DNNs and use this representation to estimate the latencies on a wide range of DNNs using the cost model. This representation empirically works because latency is a complex function of all hardware and software features for a mobile device and a good signature set would sufficiently capture the different features of the device making it very, very suitable. This leads us to the key question, how to determine the set of DNNs that contribute to a good signature set representation? 
To answer that question, we propose three methods to select the signature set from the set of all 118 networks. The first method is a simple random sampling approach where we sample a set of K networks from the superset. The other two met methods are more systematic approaches and chooses the signature set of networks by maximizing a metric of K. They are mutual information-based sampling and Spearman correlation coefficient-based sampling. More details about these methods, how they are used and why they work are provided in the paper. Please check it out. We now come to the experimental methodology where we describe how we evaluate our proposed cost model. We use XGBoost, a state-of-the-art machine learning model as the cost model of choice. We use R-square, also known as the coefficient of determination as the metric to evaluate the goodness of the learned cost model. The devices are split into train and test set with each set corresponding to 70% and 30% of all devices respectively. Each devices, each device, both in the train and the test set, contains the latency of latencies of all 118 networks. Only the training set participates in the selection of the signature set of PNLs. 10 is chosen as the number of networks for the signature set for most of the experiments, and we will also show that 10 is an ideal number of networks for, for signature set representation. Let us now look at the results that highlight the benefits of our proposed cost model. In this slide, we present the performance of the learned cost model on all the three proposed hardware representations. The plots show the actual versus predicted latency, latency for the devices in the test set. As we can observe, all the three methods show superior performance exemplified both by its high R-square values and by the alignment of predicted latency towards, towards the ideal x is, equal to line of, x is equal to y line of fit. This exemplifies that the cost model generalizes well to unseen hardware devices showcasing the utility of our simple and elegant device representation. Now, we can ask two interesting questions that's worth investigating. First, even an unstructured approach such as random sampling seems to perform well with high R-square values. Is it always the case or is this dependent on the random choice? Second, what is the optimal number of networks in the signature set? Note, the smaller the signature set, the efficient is the model due to lower characterization costs. Let us now look at experiments that try to answer these questions of interest. To qualitatively answer if random sampling always performed well, we learned 100 different cost models with different random seeds and plotted their R-square correlation value on the test set. From the plot, we can observe that random sampling performs competitively well on average, uh, competitively well on average, further substantiating the efficacy of a pro proposed novel hardware representation. However, there are samples where the model performed performs relatively worse, which clearly shows that uh, poor random choices are possible. Hence, we recommend using the more structured approaches for re representing the hardware while noting that even a simple random sampling works well most of the times. Now, we answer the second question of finding the optimal number of networks in the signature set by training different cost models with an increasing number of networks in the signature set for all the three proposed methods. The plot shows the performance of the model with increasing in the number of networks in the signature set. As we can see, for MIS and SCCS, the ideal size of network are 5 to 10, which are just 4 to 8% of the total networks in the set. For random sampling, there is a general trend of increasing accuracy with the increase in number of networks. Hence, if we could afford more measurements, then a simple random sampling could give better performance. However, we iterate the caution of the outliers that could give rise to poor models. These results substantiate the overall benefits of our proposed uh, generalizable cost model that uses an elegant input representation for the device based on a set of latencies on a signature set of small number of PNLs, ranging from 5 to 10. Now, let us look at uh, how such a model can be applied in a practical setting. So, through the previous set of experiments, we have conclusively established the efficacy of our proposed cost model and its elegant device representation that enables it to generalize across a wide range of networks and mobile devices. However, for building such a generalizable cost model at scale, we still need a large and rich data set across networks and devices. Thus, the training data set still remains a bottleneck. There are two approaches to generate the training, training set. The first approach was utilized in our experiments where we collect latency measurements on a common but large set of networks on a limited set of devices. The second approach is a different setting 
where we collect a small number of measurements on a very large set of diverse devices. The latter approach enables many people to contribute uh, small measurements on their devices in a collaborative manner to learn the cost model. This approach, which we call collaborative workload characterization, presents a practical setting where the cost model can be built in a shared manner with small contributions from a large number of people who can collectively benefit from the superior model, thus alleviating the training data set bottleneck. Let me illustrate this collaborative workload characterization with an example. Let us consider a scenario in which we are interested to know the latency of a network N on hardware K. We can pass both the representation as inputs to the proposed cost model to estimate its latency. Initially, when the model is not trained, the predictions will be way off from the actual latency. We could bridge this gap, which we could bridge this gap by training the cost model on a training set of networks and hardware devices as described in our previous experiments. In this specific setup, the model is instead learned in a collaborative manner where different people contribute different amounts of training data in addition to the hardware representation for the model to learn collaboratively. As more and more users contribute to this collaborative framework, the cost model becomes more accurate over time, leading to better predictions. This way of democratizing training data makes it possible to learn this cost model in a collaborative setting where a large number of people can contribute small fractions while benefiting immensely from each other's contribution. To study and evaluate the benefits of collaborative workload characterization, we ran a simulation with 50 devices, with each device contributing its representation and training data of latencies on 10 to 30 percent randomly chosen networks from the superset of all 118 networks. The first plot shows the evolution of the performance of cost models in terms of average R square as more devices are added towards learning the model. We observe that the accuracy increases steadily as more devices are added to the collaborative model. Surprisingly, even with just 10% contribution, uh, contribution from each device, we are able to learn accurate cost models, thus highlighting the immense utility in learning models in a collaborative setup. To fully appreciate the value of collaboration, we compare the collaborative model with another latency cost model that is trained without collaboration. We illustrate this for Redmi Note 5 Pro that uses a Cryo 260 Gold GP. The plot shows R square values of of a sequence of individual cost models learned by varying the number of networks in the training set from 1 to 118. Clearly, we see an increase in accuracy as more networks are added to the training set. If we contrast this with the case of the collaborative model learned with 50 devices, Redmi Note 5 Pro achieves a test R square of 0.98 while only contributing 10 measurements uh, as the training data set. The individual model, however, requires 11 times more data to reach the same performance of the collaborative cost model. This makes a compelling case for collaboration uh, and shows how each device with, a, with just a fraction of contributors can benefit immensely if multiple parties contribute. As the number of collaborators keeps increasing in the setup, the quantum of contribution required by each collaborator will keep going down, making this approach very promising. In summary, Characterizing latency of DNNs on hardware devices is challenging due to network and hardware diversity. Thus, we need accurate cost models to effectively characterize network on devices during development in pipelines such as hardware-aware neural architecture search and widespread deployment in a DNN-enabled Android app. We propose a superior cost model that generalizes across both networks and mobile devices on a real-world data set. The model utilizes a novel and easy to obtain representation of devices using latencies on a signature set of DNNs. We showed a practical setting of building such a generalizable cost model in a collaborative manner. We believe such a cost model will significantly reduce the computational and environmental overhead in characterizing DNNs on uh, mobile devices. Thank you. Uh, you can mail any questions that you might have to this email address.